Odin, the all-father of Norse mythology, once impaled his own heart with the mighty Gunnjnir spear and hung from the world tree Yggdrasil for nine days and nights. He did all that to gain knowledge of the ancient Norse runic letters and the magic and wisdom held within them. Fortunately, we don't need to go through such extremes today, at least not to learn about the more common and famous Nordic runes. Granted, there is still a lot that has been lost to history, but even that's better tackled through archaeology rather than Odin's methods. So what do we actually know about the old runes of the Norse and Germanic people? For starters, we know that they didn't use them quite like other cultures use their letters. Instead, the Norse people believed that their runic symbols had a metaphysical nature and contained within them magical wisdom. They represented not just sounds and words, but virtues, cosmic constants, and deep mysteries. So instead of writing their runes on parchment or animal leather, the Norse people carved them on stone, wood, and bone, hence the crude and sharp shapes of most Nordic runes. And instead of utilizing them for trade and communication, they used them to mark the graves of heroes, to honor their ancestors, or to predict the future. As time passed, the Nordic and Germanic people started using their runes for more practical purposes just like the other cultures around them did. The rapid rise of trade during the Viking Age between the 8th and 11th centuries saw the Nordic people spread and use their runes all across the continent and beyond. They used to trade with any culture they encountered, not just pillage and steal as Hollywood movies would have us believe. With that evolution of Norse people's culture, so did their runic alphabet evolve as well. That's why most historians today recognize two distinct runic alphabets, or futharks, as they are called, the Elder Futhark and the Younger Futhark. Both are named that way after the first six letters F, U, Th, A, R, and K. Let's take a look at both. The Elder Futhark is comprised of 24 runes, or at least that's how many archaeologists and historians have managed to find. The oldest discovered evidence of the Elder Futhark is dated to the early migration era of European history or between the 4th and 5th century after death. These runes are so blurred by the passing of time that historians and scholars don't even agree about the exact meaning and interpretation of many of them. Still, according to the runestones, the 24 runes of the Elder Futhark go as follows. Fehu, corresponding to F in the International Phonetic Alphabet. It stands for abundance, wealth, fertility, and success. It also symbolizes livestock. Yurus, pronounced yur or yu in IPA. It represents untamed and wild power, strength, and freedom. It's a symbol of the bull. Thurasas, th, phonetically. This is the rune of the throne, and it also stands for regeneration, defense, catharsis, and reaction. Ansus, or the Norse rune for the sound A, was associated with inspiration, wisdom, understanding, and with Odin himself. Rado, the runic letter R, is a symbol for traveling, decision-making, rhythm, and spontaneity. It also represents the wagon. Kenis, or K, is the rune for the torch. It also stands for creativity, inspiration, vision, and improvement. Gabo, Gar, or G, represents a gift as well as generosity, partnership, and exchange. Wonyo, standing for W in IPA, is a Norse rune for joy, comfort, pleasure, success, and harmony. Hagalus, or phonetically H, stands for hail as well as nature's wrath, the overcoming of obstacles, and being tested. Nothis, or N, is the Elder Futhark rune for having a need. It also symbolizes conflict, restrictions, self-reliance, willpower, and personal strength. Isa, or I in IPA, is a Norse rune for ice. It represents challenges as well as introspection and clarity. Jera, the rune for the sound J, also represents the idea of a year, time cycles, and completion. It also stood for the harvest and the idea of reaping rewards. Iwas, or Yu, symbolize a lot of things such as the Yu tree, the Yggdrasil world tree, enlightenment, balance, and death. Pethro, or Pjord, phonetically P, is usually interpreted to mean feminine energy, dance, sexuality, mystery, or play and laughter. 
Algiz. The rune standing for the letter Z is a rune of the elk. It also symbolizes protection, defense, and shields. Sowilo or Sol is the Elder Norse rune for the sun, and it phonetically matches the letter S. It also represents honor, victory, wholeness, health, and thunderbolts. Tiwaz or T is the rune of the Germanic god Tyr, the one-handed lawgiver. The rune stands for leadership, justice, battle, and masculinity. Burkana, phonetically B, is the feminine rune of the Nordic people. It represents the birch tree, as well as fertility, femininity, birth, and healing. Iwaz, not to be mistaken with Iwaz, is the rune corresponding to the phonetic sound E. It symbolizes the horse and through it transportation, movement, and change. Manaz, phonetically M, is the rune that represents humanity. It also stands for the self, individuality, human friendships, society, and cooperation. Lagus, or L, is the Elder Futhark rune for water, seas, and the ocean. It was associated with people's intuition, dreams, hopes and fears, and emotions in general. Ingus, or Ingwas, is a complex rune, pronounced as a nasal N. It stands for the ancient god Ing, Ingvas, Evingi, or Frey, and it represents masculine energy. It also stands for a seed, growth, change, and a home's hearth. Othala, or O phonetically, is a rune for heritage, ancestry, inheritance, and one's estate. It also represents experience, personal possessions, and value. Dagas, or just D in the International Phonetic Alphabet, is the last letter of the Elder Futhark. It stands for the dawn and the day, and it represents illumination, hope, and awakening. These 24 runes comprise the Elder Futhark, at least as we know it today. Used between the 2nd and 8th century after death, as far as we could tell, the Elder Futhark was eventually replaced by the Younger Futhark. This new iteration of the Norse alphabet included only 16 runes, but used them in a more complex manner. They also found more practical applications as they had to serve the Nordic people during the height of the Viking Age between the 8th and the 12th century after death. Here's what these 16 runes looked like and what they meant. Feo or Frey was a rune for the phonetic letter F. This rune meant wealth, as in the Elder Futhark. Ur, Yor, or simply U in the International Phonetic Alphabet is the rune for snow, rain, and dross. Thurs or Purs, pronounced Th phonetically, is a rune used for danger, giants, and anguish. Os or just O in IPA is a younger Futhark rune for Haven, Estuary, and Odin himself. Reed or Rod, the rune for the sound R, was used to represent horses, riding, journeys, and moving at high speed. Town. Phonetically, both K and G was a Norse rune for disease, death, ulcer, and malady. The Hegel or Hagal rune stands for the letter H and replaced the elder rune Hagalaz as a rune for hail and cold. Nodder or Nid is a rune replacing Nothus as a phonetic N and the symbol of one's need and constraints. Iza or Is, as in the elder Futhark, stands for the sound I and means ice and challenges, but also destruction. R or Yor, standing for the A sound, is a rune that represents bountifulness and good harvest. Sol or Seagull, the rune for the phonetic S, is a rune of the sun, as in the Elder Futhark. Tyr, the rune for the sound T, here too is the rune for the one-handed lawgiver god Tyr. Bjarkin or Bikork, the rune for B in IPA, represents the birch tree, spring, new life, fertility, and femininity. Mar or man for the sound of M is a rune symbolizing the man and mankind, as well as our mortality. Logr or Logr, the rune for the sound L, stands for water, rivers, and waterfalls, similar to Lagus in the Elder Futhark. 
Yor or Yol, a rune for the sounds R and Z, symbolize the yew tree and endurance. As you can see, the meanings of a lot of Norse runes, old and new, are quite symbolic and abstract. All their interpretations were taken from texts, songs, and poems, or even just single sentences and phrases carved into runestones. This has led to a lot of mixed and even contradictory beliefs about some runes, but that's to be expected when trying to read ancient runic letters. One thing is certain, Norse runes are mysterious and rich in meaning, as they are unique and beautiful. Did this video give you some new insights into Norse runes? If so, and you want to know more about the Nordic people and other ancient cultures, drop a like and subscribe for more videos like this one, and click the notification button too to stay notified about new videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.